Altered Carbon Season 1 is the newest Netflix original series that I spent 10 hours of my life watching and didn't regret it. No, no, I actually really dug Alter Carbon. Alter Carbon is based on the book on, of the same name about a former elite soldier by the name of Takeshi uh, Kovacs. And the show is played by Joe Can I Get a What What Kinnaman. Plot of the series is kind of difficult to get into, but let's get to it. Kovacs was a former soldier, of course. He's a, he His character was either Asian or Chinese. I'm not really sure what. But in the future, they have sleeves or bodies or cloning, but they call it sleeves. So if you die, they can bring you back from the dead by using a sleeve of another person. So you, you can be a man or a female. It doesn't matter what. You can be even a little. You could be a little girl inside of a 60-year-old woman's body, which is also in one of the episodes in this show, which is kind of kind of weird and kind of fucked up. But yeah, so after something went bad at the beginning of the show, Kovacs wakes up 250 years into the future. This time, he's now in the body of Joe Kinnaman, okay? And Joe Kinnaman's body did belong to another detective's, uh, was the, the body of a detective's boyfriend. So... Kristen Ortega is Kovacs's, Kovacs's body's ex-boyfriend who died. And yeah, he now inhabits that body. It's kind of weird to explain, but that's what happens. So yeah. So once she gets word of this, she kind of takes it to heart. And she he finds out later on exactly what his sleeve meant to her. Because he sees something in her and he knows it. So anyway, he is woken up by Lawrence Bancraft, a the billionaire of this century. And he needs him to solve his own murder. And by doing so, he will allow Kovacs to go free. He won't put him back to sleep, a.k.a. kill you. He is free from his claws to do whatever he wants because... Bancroft literally owns the sleeve he's inhabiting, which is kind of fucked up because it's kind of slavery if you ask me. But yeah, so that's the deal along the way. It sounds interesting, but there's another plot twist that comes from a close relative of his to blackmailing him into trying to close this case quickly. Or there will be consequences. And that is all I will say about that. There are not big ass plot synopsis. This is a great, great series. It's a lot of TNA in this show. This show has lots of TNA. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Because Netflix can get away with it. But yeah. This is the type of hard edge stuff I want to see Joe Kinnaman doing. You know. Where he can be himself. He can act the way he can act. Because he, he still acts like he usually does. Which is a little bit wooden. But it's recalled for him too. And then when it's time for him to emote. He does do that very well. So I have no problems with Joe Kinnaman in this uh, show. Um, Martha Hagarita. I can't pronounce her name because she's Mexican. Plays Kristen Ortega here. And... She's awesome. She is a firecracker in this series, and I fucking love her acting in this movie because every time she gets mad or she's having a conversation with her mom, she goes into Spanish and English in and out, so you never know when she's going to do either or. When she goes into Spanish, the subtitles will come up so we can understand what the fuck she's saying. Obviously, this is not the holiday special we're talking about here. That would have helped for the Wookiees back in 78. Just saying. Anyways... So if she gets mad, da, 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 da. in Spanish, it's fucking awesome. I, I don't know why when women get mad and they speak Spanish it's, or using their native tongues is always the fucking most hilarious thing I've ever seen. It's just cool, I guess. I, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, Takeshi 
on along the way, Takeshi gets involved with uh, Lawrence's wife, Miriam Bancraft. And, well, Miriam also has some secrets of her own. Not only physically, but she also has something to do with everything going on in the series. So, the series is literally a back and forth scenario here. So, you're not sure what goes on. But in the series, you also go back to the past to where Takeshi is in his real body. And he and another person, a, a relative of his, is in this group. Now, she also likes the fact that it's just her and him instead of him now siding with this other group of elite soldiers, pretty much. And it makes her a little bit jealous, to say the least. And he does fuck the leader of this group. So that complicates things even more. Setting up the second half of the series, what I was just describing to you. Yeah, it, it's a lot to describe in only 10 episodes. I'm surprised they did it well in only 10 episodes of the show. But I think episode 7 is the longest episode because it is an hour and 8 minutes long on Netflix. So that is the longest episode of the series so far. Each other episode is either 58 to 55 minutes at late length at best. So it's an easy watch. I am shocked this is an easy watch. But you can tell the people that made this show watch Blade Runner. Because watching this show is like watching a Blade Runner TV series. It is so heavily inspired by Blade Runner. To see the effects budget for this show had to have been high. But it's Netflix. Netflix is willing to spend what did they say? 80 million? 80, 80 billion dollars on shows and movies in a year? So I think this went into their budget. It is very, very beautiful to look at. Really, really good. The CGI effects in this, mo uh, in this movie, the show looks fucking phenomenal. For a TV show. We can't get TV shows on normal TV to look like this. In the future, where cars are flying and shit like that. You got visuals coming in. They have little shit you can push on your arm. And it brings up like a little holographic image. Like it's fucking uh, a real life movie. That is brilliant. Fucking brilliant. I love it. I, I The visuals are muy caliente for me, man. Jesus Christ. The acting in the show is phenomenal. Because you never know. Who the fuck, what anybody is, anybody could be anybody in this show. And when you really find out what's going on, then yeah. There's also this other side plot, which I won't go too much into, about him moving into this hotel. The hotel is also an, uh, owned by a hologram version of the hotel itself. So the hotel comes to him in human form. And by him signing up with this hotel, the hotel is now obligated to protect him from anybody. So the hotel arms itself, literally, which is fucking cool. And there's another side plot where he meets this black dude and has him come to the hotel. And the hotel agrees to save his daughter, who's been fucked up real bad. So he has to go psychconsciously into her mind and fucking save her. And turn her back into a normal human being. And the only way for the dad to see his daughter is either through this TV. Because any glimpse of him seeing her will freak her out instantly. And she goes back to the way she was. This is weird. It's, I, yeah, it, it's weird. You're probably scratching your head like, what? And I'm like, yep. But it's, it's a thing. It happens. The end result is awesome. You got to see it. You, you just got to watch the show. Believe me when I say everything I just said sound so sci-fi-ish, but it's it's in the show. It's literally in the show for you to take a look at. As well as all the TNA that's in this goddamn thing. <laughs> but overall, Alter Carbon Season 1 was a damn good Netflix series. This is the first Netflix series I've watched that's not a Marvel property. This is Netflix's property itself. And as a standalone Netflix series, it holds up. 
especially to the book. Now, when it comes to the other two books, because this is a trilogy of books, the next season, I wonder if they're going to still call it Alter Carbon or are they going to call it the name of the second book? Unless they're going to call it Alter Carbon and then the colon, the tagline, will be the name of the next book-ish. So Alter Carbon, hashtag this book, like Mission Impossible dash Fallout, like that maybe? I don't know, but we, we, we could get three seasons out of this because there are three books. So if we do, that's going to be three great seasons, and I can't wait to see them. And I will give Alter Carbon a B plus. Let me know what you guys think about Alter Carbon down below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know what is your favorite show to watch on Netflix, and if it's something I need to be um, watching like right now as do we speak. Let me know down below. And I will catch you guys later.